yummy, delicious, and solid state. <laughs> anyway, got this amp up and running. Um, I got it off someone mainly to use the cabinet and the speakers. Cheap way to do it. Um, rather than build one for the Fender Bassman. However, uh, the amp didn't work. And um, here's my little helper that contributes nothing and cares less about it. Um, been a bit of a delay with fixing this. One, because I went into hospital. Um, two, because I haven't been feeling very well at all. But anyway, I'm back on track now, so I thought I'd tackle this again. Now, you'll probably notice this diode here sticking up. It was purely just shoved in to test it out. I am going to pull the, um, uh, the PCB out and uh, put that in properly later, so don't worry about that. Um, however, <clears throat> what had actually happened is these 5 watt 330 ohm resistors were blown and that diode had a complete crack in it. Now this is a very crude power management system right here. Uh, one side's getting minus 45 or between 43 and 46 minus 43 to 46 volts from the power transformer. This side's getting plus 43 to 46 volts power trans from the power transformer and then this diode um, Well this resistor drops it down to 16 or uh, 16 volts DC and then you've got your Your diode here keeping it in check with the filter capacitor and then it goes off and it feeds all this lovely low voltage circuitry that's very very sensitive and then this side's your plus side. And in fact, I've got this switched on right now. You can you can actually see some brown marks around the PCBs here. And that's because this crude power management system is producing a lot of heat. In fact, waving my hand over the top, I can feel the heat coming off these 5 watt resistors. They probably should be 10 watt resistors. However, <clears throat> replacing this diode did the trick. Um, the diode probably blew and then there's no load and all of a sudden these resistors have overheated. Who knows what the main cause was, but both these resistors were well out of spec and the diode had a crack in it, physically broken in half. Um, there's some burn tracks underneath on the PCB, but they are intact, so I'm going to leave them alone. Uh, I've put some um, uh, a coating of like a nail varnish over the top of them to protect them and keep them intact but they are um, providing connectivity there's continuity through the tracks so I'm not going to touch them um, the other thing uh, I noticed is that these two resistors here and these ones here which are 0.22 ohm so less than a quarter of an ohm um, originally somehow they had 22 ohm resistors in there causing the amp to choke up and these have to do with the output of the amp so you've got these resistors coming out of um, your um, your transistors here so 50 watts a side plus uh, plus and minus um, going into here going through this circuitry going to here and then coming out of these two wires which are connected directly to the speaker so anyway, long story short, it's all working now. Um, I haven't got it plugged in, but I'll just turn the volume up a bit and you'll hear a nice squeal there. The volume was up on one just then, so it is a 100 watt amp. It is solid state, <clears throat> but it is a 100 watt. Anyway, uh, it's all done. It's all working now. Now the thing is, is that I don't want to put it back in the cabinet because I like this cabinet and I'm going to use it for my Fender basement. But my thinking is, do I build a head for this and make it a Fender Frontman Zero? <laughs> because it won't have any speakers, it won't have 212s, it'll have nothing. Um, do I make it a head and get rid of it and sell it because I just don't like solid state stuff? 
Uh, I don't care what brand it is. I'm just not a fan. It's just not for me. Some people like Kempers. Some people like Solid State. Some people like Valves. I'll stick to my valves. Um, leave a comment. What should I do? Should I put it back in the cabinet and sell it? Should I build a cabinet for it and make it a head and sell it? And keep the cabinet for my Fender Bassman? Oh, by the way, that speaker here. It's just a local manufactured one. It sounds pretty good, but it's getting replaced with a Jensen C12N, I believe. Could be a C12Q. I'll have to double check. Anyway. That's happening in another video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. The amp is now fixed. Sorry I didn't video the repairs, but I gave you a rundown of what I did. These resistors were replaced. That die was replaced. This one's still in check. These resistors were replaced. The amp is now up and running. Oh, and the channel selector works. So clean channel and dirty channel and more dirty channel. Oh, these pots need to be replaced as well because they were super glued in and when I pulled the knobs off, the pots came with it, they broke. So I won't bother videoing that. It's just a matter of unsoldering these pots that you can never buy in shops because they have the, the grounding plate on either side. What I'm going to do is just put in regular pots and run a ground wire into each side soldering the ground wire to the body of the pot and in through the uh, the holes there for the PCB. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, that was just the turning the amp off pop. See you next time.